Hey, Nathan Drake here. You know, while I'm out climbing every rock I can find, I always enjoy listening to the latest podcast from the PSBG Podcast Network. Oh, yeah. Everyone and welcome to another E3 breakdown from PSVG, the Play Some Video Games podcast network, if you will. We are coming down to the wire finally, and we're trickling down the last couple remaining uh, recap and reactions uh, from E3. And tonight, I'm going solo again to talk about one of my favorite developers, and that is bethesda so if you listen to the podcast at all you know that i love pretty much everything bethesda works on so it makes sense for me of course of all people to be talking about what i saw there um and we still have ubisoft coming up which will be released later this week as well we're just trying to coordinate some schedules so i'm not by myself again uh talking about this but let's get to what we're here for and that is bethesda so bethesda obviously uh, i was super hyped for this uh, presentation uh which may have kind of come back and bit me a little bit not because it was bad, but because I think I had so much going on in my head. And I was expecting so much, especially after last year's presentation, that uh, I wasn't let down because there's still a lot of great content to be dissected, which a lot of people seem to have missed uh, in the media. Um, I didn't. And that's why I'm here to recap. So let's get to it. So right off the bat, the conference was a little weird. Uh, whatever venue they rented this time they decided to do a little bit different, unique type stage setup where the stage was actually in the middle of like an oval arena type thing. Uh, and there were big giant monitors and they were on both sides that people could see. So the presenters had to kind of walk back and forth to address both sides of the audience, which was a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> no surprise to anybody. They started off by showing um, Rage 2. So it started off a little slow with the Rage 2 presentation. Um, Andrew WK came out, uh, had a performance again, which surprisingly, I mean, Andrew WK is great, but surprisingly it fell flat on the audience for some reason, which made no sense to me at all. So he's, if you've ever seen Andrew WK, he's full party energy the whole time. So, I mean, he's rocking out despite getting nothing from the crowd. So it made it a little bit awkward. I mean, at one point he was even like rocking out on the keyboard uh, while singing and rocking out, which has got to be like so hard to do. Um, but, you know, he did his presentation, the same song we've seen in all the Rage 2 trailers, uh, and then we got into uh, Rage 2. One thing I will note that is a little odd. So last year, Bethesda made a big deal about Save Player 1 campaign, uh, focusing on single-player games, but then immediately kind of switched this year to talk a lot about multiplayer. It's not bad. I still enjoy it, but it just seems a little bit awkward, and they kind of ate some crow there, if you will. Uh, so they showed a bunch of Rage 2, no surprise at all. We know our main character is named uh, Walker. Um, who's just a really angry dude in post-apocalyptic uh, shooter-type game we've seen. Um, he's referred to as the Last Ranger, and the enemies in this game are referred to as the Authority. Uh, drives around cars, shoots bad guys, sometimes from inside the car, sometimes running around on foot. Um, very much a Mad Max vibe. Uh, if anybody played the first Rage, it was not a bad game at all. However, it did seem to get lost and forgotten uh, by many players. Uh, I played it myself way late. I uh, got it at a steep discount and had a lot of fun with it for what it was worth. So I'm expecting a lot more out of this one. Uh, especially with everything we've seen so far it looks great get a very much uh, borderlands-esque vibe um i think it was q somebody said in the chat as we were live reacting to it that it, they had a bethesda um a bullet storm vibe uh, as far as how the gunplay looks it looks very fast uh high quality and the best part in my opinion is the protagonist does a lot of duke nukem like hail to the king baby oh hell yeah type things as he's playing throughout the game so it's a lot of fun uh rage 2 will be dropping spring 2019 as of right now not a hard date yet um but but that's pretty good about hitting their date so i don't think we'll have any issues there uh next surprise already we're seeing more doom doom eternal is coming uh to continue on the doom 
uh, saga, if you will. Uh, so next installment, it is a sequel. Uh, they're pledging they will have twice as many demons. Uh, we'll let us see Hell on Earth for the first time. Um, and they'll show us a lot more at QuakeCon this August. So they didn't show us a whole lot, but they did pledge it's supposed to be bigger, badder, and better than ever before. And we'll see much more in August when that drops there, too. Next surprising announcement came from Prey, which was one of their uh, titles that released last year. They kind of seemed to get a lot of buzz when it initially dropped and then faded off rather quickly. Uh, I haven't played it personally yet. I do have it digitally. Haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, but what they did do is they announced some new modes that were available for Prey that night for free. Free stuff includes a new game plus mode, survival mode. Uh, and then there's some uh, paid DLC called Moon Crash, uh, which they basically said was infinitely replayable. Uh, so it kind of just uh, randomly generates those stages to go through. So it makes it uh, easy to play through. Uh, they also announced an upcoming competitive mode called uh, Typhon Hunter, which one human takes the role of the shapeshifter mimics. Um, and actually, wait, no, sorry. One human mode and five mimics, I believe is what it was. And they could shapeshift and hide. So it's very similar to uh, Evolve or Friday the 13th, where one player is the overpowered player and else kind of is better off hiding from them. Uh, this is kind of where we're getting that vibe there from uh, on that Prey uh, upcoming mode that's coming out later. They didn't give a date for it, but they did say it's coming soon. Uh, just kind of surprised to see Prey get some more love. Uh, shows that commitment once again from Bethesda and Arcane Studios uh, that they stick by their products and continue to release uh, more for them there afterwards uh next announcement was big one um wolfenstein 2 got great critic reviews uh, all last year on many game of the year uh lists uh, mine as well absolutely loved uh, wolfenstein 2 uh so good news we're getting more uh it's called wolfenstein youngblood set in the 80s uh your bj and anya's twins the whole game can either be played solo or in co-op mode uh coming next year they didn't say when per se uh but just that whole concept in itself looks great so we get to see the kids all grown up and they're going through france is where it's set in for this one so more nazi stomping uh badness as only wolf and sign can deliver so stay tuned for more of that uh next on the list this was my big one we all know i love fallout fallout 76 it is indeed an online game now there were tons of rumors dropping before e3 that this was going to be an online survival mode uh online shooter game you know it didn't really sound that good however what we saw eased all my concerns right away uh it's set in west virginia as we heard uh, earlier we kind of glanced at from the uh the, the music they played during the initial trailer um, online multiplayer, and the map is four times larger than what we had in Fallout 4, which was a massive map in itself. So this is huge. Uh, they kind of described it as a softcore survival, um, which means if you die, you don't lose progression. Uh, your character isn't tied to one server. You'll never even see a server as you play. Uh, you'll share the world with dozens of other players, but not hundreds. So they don't want to promise overcrowding. So it gives you that post-apocalyptic feel where, yes, you will run into other people, but it won't be like playing World of Warcraft where you enter a town and there's 100 people there. Uh, or Destiny where you go into a place and there's you know, 20, 30, 40 people in one uh, location doing missions. That won't happen in Fallout 76. However, you could team up with all your friends, uh, run an encampment, kind of grow through there too. Um they're showing how multiplayer work and it's a shared crafting system that will let us team up with our friends to make our own outposts um, has dedicated servers. Um, Bethesda will be supporting it for years to come. They promise it. Um, and quite possibly in the coolest fashion there, they're nuclear launch code. So they're hidden throughout the wasteland. You need multiple different letters there to compile what the actual launch code is, but then you can shoot off nukes to hit other towns or other players settlements to kind of lay flat to them. And then go reap all the rewards for what's left there. Um, does kind of look, it still looks very much Fallout. Um, obviously, massive world, great exploration. Uh, but the combat clearly had to change a little bit. I can't, they didn't address it, but I can't imagine that the VAT system is still there because that won't work in a multiplayer uh, aspect. But some of the creatures we saw, we saw like these bat like creatures and these giant insect creatures. So we're seeing a lot of things we've never seen in the wasteland before, uh, most likely because this is right after the bombs dropped and you're the first people out of a vault. Uh, to address and rebuild society as it is there. So it uh, looks awesome. I'm very excited. Uh, that's a no-brainer. We kind of knew that was going to happen. However, I will report other staffers at PSVG were also excited for this, and I may get finally some other people to play a Fallout game. This is not a standard one, but I get some other people excited about it. It should be fun to play with others. So stay tuned. Uh, that is dropping this year. I will be purchasing. Uh, actually, my wife said she'll purchase it for me for my birthday because it comes out uh, November 13th, I believe, or the 14th, a couple days after my birthday. Uh, so my wife is purchasing that for me. So I will be playing that, and I hope to get everybody on PSVG on board as well. Next up, Elder Scrolls. Yeah! Oh, wait. It's a mobile game. Now, mobile games get a lot of crap. Uh, we had some bashing on mobile games, actually, earlier in other uh, press conference reactions. However, this one seemed to be... 
addressed in kind of the right way. Uh, so Blades is a first-person Elder Scrolls game with touch inputs um, with unique and procedurally generated dungeons. Um, it can be played both in portrait and landscape mode, so you actually look like you're doing something on your phone as opposed to playing a game so somebody comes by and sees it. Uh, combat and dungeon crawling uh, looked pretty good. Um, it was pretty standard as far as like, hack and slash, but it does seem like they took the time to make it feel like a genuine Elder Scrolls game, albeit a mobile one. Um, it's coming this fall. Uh, you can visit your friends town so it has like some multiplayer type aspect uh and best of all it'll be free i uh, continue that trend of bethesda games on mobile being free so uh if you're an elder scrolls fan that's gonna hold you over because there was no official uh release date for elder scrolls uh they did however tease a new game uh really short teaser didn't really show you anything they just kind of acknowledged this long rumored game uh is in fact there uh was described as next gen which i don't know if that means it's going to be for the next generation of consoles or they just means to be something unlike anything we've ever seen before as far as video games, meaning, you know, next-gen level video games. Uh, it is that Starfield game we've heard. So we've heard a lot that they've been working on this game that's sim- that was similar to a Fallout in space. You know, this could be their Mass Effect uh, competitor type thing that's going on there too. So it didn't really show us anything. Uh, just simply acknowledged it existed and that's coming. It's in development. We don't release it or anything like that. And then lastly, they teased the next project after Starfield would in fact be Elder Scrolls. Um, so that is coming down the line. Um, all they literally showed you was a landscape as far as the name saying the Elder Scrolls, and that's it. Um, they're working on the game. Uh, it's confirmed, so people can stop wondering about that. Um, a few other small things that they did announce that I didn't address earlier. Uh, the Elder Scrolls card game is getting a visual overhaul and come out later on Switch, Xbox One, PS4. Uh, so be available everywhere if you're into those trading card games. Elder Scrolls Online's next DLC uh, is called Wolf Hunter. Uh, they're adding werewolves to the game, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I got a really cool sizzle, sizzle trailer there that kind of showed a little bit of the gameplay there, but not much to, to really get excited about. I, I don't personally play it. I don't know a lot of people that do. Um, also, Quake Champions got another new trailer, so that's that's fine. They're making Prey and Wolfenstein VR games. So those are kind of cool if you have a VR set up and you can play an Oculus. Uh, one of the things that was very fun that, that they we thought was a joke trailer at first, however, it's confirmed that it actually is out. Uh, there's an Alexa-powered Skyrim. So you can play uh, Skyrim on your Alexa device if you so are inclined to. Um, and they also announced, um, which it was already out of the time, though, that Fallout Shelter was hitting PS4 and Switch when they did the press conference. Those are out now as well. Also free, of course. Um, so overall, Bethesda, like I said, they brought a lot of great things. We're seeing continued support for Prey. We're seeing a new Wolfenstein. We're seeing a new Doom. Fallout 76 looks like it's going to be big, even though it's not a traditional Fallout game. Uh, and then they tease things for down the line that are coming. We got Rage 2 next year, and then we have, uh, you know, our Starfield and uh, Elder Scrolls coming farther down the line. So it just seems that, once again, Bethesda brought the content uh, and got people excited, especially the Bethesda fans. While the presentation wasn't as posh and great as it could be, uh, I still enjoyed everything I saw there. Um, and I'm very excited to, once again, give Bethesda all of my money and buy all of the games they put out. Yeah. So that's it for me, everybody. Uh like I said, to come, we will see more Ubisoft uh, coverage, our recap and reactions podcast. I hope to have Nathan. We'll see if I can get somebody else on there with me to talk about it. But until then, most importantly, boys and girls, it is ever so important that you never stop gaming.